I'm not going on camera. I am not going on camera, okay? I won't do it. I'm devastated that she is gone. I am devastated. It has crushed me that I cannot find her and don't know what happened to her. And I understand, I understand that the FBI has to look at me because of the statistics and the percentages, and I have put up with that with them. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. That was an exclusive interview Lauren did with Barry Morphew sometime in September last year. And there's one word that stood out in that particular interview. And we're going to talk about that in the remainder of this episode. Now, what I'm going to do once again is I'm going to juxtapose the same thing, uh, selecting a single word from a short amount of, of text, a, a short amount of um, uh, subtext, I guess one could say, or just um, script, and uh, seeing whether there's more behind it. And we're going to use the Chris Watts case uh, to go into it. And... Um, see how relevant that was okay so that's what we're going to do and what i'm going to do in the um taking the sermon on the porch is i'm gonna um play the the same thing that barry said that i played earlier i'm going to play it again i'm going to play the chris watts thing and then i'm going to before i reveal what it is let's see if you can you can find the the loaded word that that we're going to be talking about okay so keep your ears open and i'm going to now juxtapose both of these short statements first from chris watts then again from barry morphy and see if you can pick it up and it's just like there's it's like it's vanished like she's not like when i got home yesterday it was like a ghost town like she wasn't here kids weren't here i have no idea like where they went and it doesn't, it's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. It's like a nightmare that I just can't wake up from. And now let's go back to that clip from Lauren Scharf again. Let's listen in. I'm devastated that she is gone. I am devastated. It has crushed me that I cannot find her and don't know what happened to her. And I understand, I understand that the FBI has to look at me because of the statistics and the percentages. And I have put up with that with them. I have done it. So we've juxtaposed both of these statements and now it's a very short little bit of, um, I guess, text that, that we want to look at. And you might say it's too small. But in the Chris Watts case, from that, you might say, well, was he talking about a ghost town? Was he talking about vanished? Was he talking about the whole thing not feeling real, you know, feeling like a nightmare and ghost town and nightmare sort of correspond to that? where Barry Morphew says he's feeling devastated and so on. Something else that he says that I think is very interesting, just his word choice, because he can choose any words to say what he means. He talks about putting up with, and in this case, he talks about putting up with law enforcement. Now, here you have law enforcement trying to investigate what happened to his wife, and he's putting up with it. If you just think about what that means, you know, he's putting up with the authorities investigating where his wife is and Aren't they supposed to be doing that? Aren't they, aren't they supposed to be doing their job? And so one wonders whether he didn't feel that way about Suzanne, that he didn't feel like he was putting up with her, even though, you know, he's her husband, putting up with her cancer, putting up with this, putting up with that, right? But those aren't actually any of the terms that I want to focus on. I want to focus on a term that has got to do with the transformation of a human being, Um within a crime scenario, right? Um, Something that is, has got to do with physical um, destruction or physical impact or force, right? And so the key term from Chris Watts is this one. And it doesn't, it's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. So Chris Watts volunteers this unusual word or these unusual words earth shattering right and at the same time that he says it's earth shattering he also says you know it doesn't feel real right now now to us 
we are thinking, well, he's talking about, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel real to him um, what is happening. I guess um, Shanann leaving or whatever. It, but in a weird way, we're basically just saying whatever we don't know um, d- doesn't feel real to him. Of course, in hindsight, we know that he did know what was happening because he committed the crime. But I think that was never, nevertheless true, meaning that even though he committed the crime, even though he disposed of their bodies, even though um, he did terrible things, you know, not just disposing of the bodies, but also what he did physically to them, but and also the, the oil tanks, I think it still doesn't feel real to him. Everything is feeling very weird and, and he's struggling to... He's struggling to grasp it um, consciously. Even though he did it, he's struggling to grasp it. But the key word there is earth-shattering. Now, I remember when this originally came out, because I'm a wordsmith, because I work with words, because I'm a narrator, I'm also very selective in the words that I choose. But I'm also very... My ears prick up when you find someone who's not a wordsmith, who doesn't write books, who uses some, I call it flowery language, a word that just sticks out. And it could be um, projection. So you you might say, no, 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 that that word is completely normal. And a lot of people did say that. Bear in mind, this was the analysis when the Sermon on the Porch came out before, before we knew actually what happened. And so one of the words I said that 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 I highlighted was earth shattering. Now you might say, well, look, fracking is all about shattering the earth. Um, but as it turned out, Chris Watts had shattered the earth in terms of digging Shanann's grave. And you can see, and he did it, he had to do it very quickly. He didn't only shatter the earth, he also had to patch it over, which is why he used a rake. But he would have had to break through that substrate that crusty substrate and, and get to the soft dirt underneath. And um, and um, the the whole process of that would be very rapid digging, right? Digging through fairly dry earth out there in the dust in Colorado. And so what he did was shatter the earth. And it's kind of a term that can be taken both ways. It can mean something huge happening, such as murdering your own family, which he knows he did. So that is earth-shattering. What he's done has has shattered his world. But it is also literally earth-shattering. It's literally shattering the ground at that well site, right? Him doing it with a a, a shovel and, and then smoothing it over with a rake, right? So that's the first point to make. Then with Barry, what is the word that he's using? It has crushed me. So Barry could use any words to describe what he's going through, just like Chris Watts could have used any words. But the word that he uses is crushed, right? Now, I just want to go back to Chris Watts. When he says earth shattering, the the key word actually hasn't got to do with the earth, although it involves the earth. It's got to do with shatter, right? And you can take it even further that when he put the bodies of his children through the thief hatches, there would have been some um, something like shattering, right? Um, the um, Not necessarily the breaking of tissue, although that did happen with Bella's frenulum, but almost like a bone crunching, you know, trying to force these little bodies, which are almost like sticks, through this narrow opening, and I'm, I'm sorry for the graphic nature of what I'm saying, um, but you, I think you get what I'm talking about. It's something that is um, being broken, right? And in the Morphew case, he uses a different word. He uses the word crush. And when you think about that word, what do you think about? I'm devastated. It has crushed me that I cannot find her and don't know what happened to her. Is Barry devastated by what happened to Suzanne? Is he crushed 
by what happened to Suzanne. Maybe the cancer was devastating. Perhaps finding out that she had cancer again was crushing. Perhaps what happened with the financial situation was devastating and crushing, right? Perhaps the situation was those things. But I think the other side that you've got to look at is Barry's a landscaper. And what he does is, and this may be being, using a little bit of too much license, but he, his job is to sort of devastate a landscape, to totally transform it. His job is also to, um, in some instances, to crush certain um, things into a shape in, in order to, to mold surfaces so that they can become walls or barriers or whatever the case may be. And we know that some of the things that he was doing was, for example, laying foundations and creating, I think, like a barrier wall around a river. And so some of what, what you could do in terms of that is um, use rocks. And what do you do with rocks that are too big? You need to crush them. You need to break them into smaller pieces. And if that's something that you do in landscaping, why wouldn't you do that with a person if you needed to create a landscape where you wouldn't be bothered by something as bothersome as human remains? Now think about landscaping in the context of um, you get rid of things that are going to irritate you in terms of the landscape. So if there's a tree there that you don't want, you uproot it. If there are big rocks there that you don't want it there, you remove it. You cart them away. If there's a section by the river that you want to remake, recreate, then you're going to reshape it. You're going to um, excavate. You're going to, um, you know, reshape the terrain through digging, through um, sometimes rolling kind of a heavy object over it that, that, that is going to compact the ground that you've excavated. Um, you could also say that that is crushing. Um, but in a scenario that, that we're sort of talking about here, we are thinking about could he have used that word psychologically, subconsciously in association with Suzanne? Is it possible that what happened to Suzanne was that part of her was crushed? And because of that, that is why and how she's disappeared, because she was crushed. We know that in the Chris Watts case, because the earth was shattered, his family disappeared. Indirectly, in terms of the oil, the shattering of the earth, which is fracking, in terms of the oil tanks, but also directly in terms of him shattering the earth in order to make a shallow grave for Shanann. Does that make sense? So we'll obviously be able to look back on this case from the future and say, hopefully, um, you know, did we find out what happened to Suzanne and did this word have any bearing on it? It's early, it's very early to make, to speculate in this way, but I'm just saying this is a word that stands out. That may not stand out for a good reason or it may stand out for a reason. Um, how often have you heard other people in high profile cases say they are crushed by something that has happened? Chris Watts, I don't think, ever used that word. I don't think the Ramses ever used that word. I don't think the McCanns ever used that word. So it feels like a word idiosyncratic to Barry. And right next to him saying the word, he also talks about, um, I'm crushed. And then he says, Devastated. It has crushed me that I cannot find her and don't know what happened to her. So in the context of saying that it's crushed him, he says, it has crushed me. He says, I cannot find, or, yeah, I cannot find her and I don't know what has happened to her. So right next to this idea of what has happened to Suzanne and where is she and what happened to her is this idea of being crushed. It is a psychological juxtaposition, certainly in, in his statement here. And the question is, how relevant is it? How pertinent is it? Well... Time will tell.
Don't forget, later today I'll be doing a live stream at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on when did the pre-meditation start. So I've prepared some notes and some aspects just to go through in that. So if you've got any questions or comments, you, you're welcome to participate. Even if it's on a different subject, that's also fine. So um, don't miss that. That is uh, 7 p.m. UK time. I'm not quite sure what time it is in Australia, but I think it's pretty early. So hopefully I'll see you guys then. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.